Is this the fastest this thing has ever been, you think? Yes. Yeah? I think so. We're hitting 65 kilometers an hour. Oh! Hurry, I want to see the transmission assembly before we leave here. Hurry. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today, two very rare Fiat's, 1958 vintage. You know the Fiat Multipla? These were built by Fiat Special Projects. Uh, these are the only two left in the world. These are two fascinating cars. People just go crazy when they see them. They belong to a gentleman named uh, Stuart Parr. He has the Stuart Parr collection. Stuart, come on in here. How are you? Good to see you, my friend. Good. How are you, Jay? Hey, thanks for saving these and restoring them. Mm. It's really wonderful. I know they built, what, five of these, right? And what was the reason they were built? Gianagnelli wanted, uh, he wanted some special cars to take visiting dignitaries, actors, whoever, around the Mia Fiori factory. And he just wanted, uh, you know, a bespoke, a little more upgraded car. Right, right, yeah. right. And what motors? Is this the 1100cc motor? That's the 600. Oh, wow, it's the 600cc. Yeah, it's okay. 58, so... And it's all glass roof with no air conditioning, so... Well, there's a couple of tabs here, and yeah. the roof comes off in about two minutes. Oh, it just, the whole thing lifts off? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just so funny that it would be a little 600cc, you know, you think you, your biggest, most luxurious car. Yeah. But this is what Fiat was in the 50s, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the most interesting things to me is, is that like with the Vespa, I think people are so passionate about it and uh, they have all these incredible memories and it's the same with the Cinquecento and I think what people don't realize is, is that it was the first thing that put people after the war on two wheels. Sure. And the Cinquecento and the Multipla were the first thing to bring people inside from the rain and you know, they happen to do a beautiful job and there's a smile on the front of the car but... Well I have a 59 Fiat uh, Milicento. Mm -hmm. And that thing is fabulous. That would be the equivalent of, I guess, maybe a Ford Galaxy, a middle right. manager car. You could, you could seat six people, I guess, in a pinch. Yeah. Six small Italians in the thing. And it's four speed on the car. It's lively. It's, I mean, it's fun to, it's, right. it's the most fun car to drive. It doesn't weigh anything. And it's only about, what, 60, 70 horsepower, something if that. Yeah. And I enjoy driving that thing all the time. And I just love the effort that went into these. I mean, what is that, mahogany? What is that wooden bumper? Yeah, I think those are oak. Is it oak? Yeah, these are oak. And those, and that's obviously steam bent, I guess, right? Isn't that how they do it? Well, this could have been steam bent, but, you know, it's actually, if you look at it, the log is going this way. They might have just gotten rid of all the wood because the line, I mean, right. they may have just thrown away the rest. Right, right. It yeah. doesn't even look... I don't think it's bent, actually, the way the uh, quarter sun's going. Well, it's, I mean, it's just, and what are those, 13-inch wheels or maybe 12s? What, what? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you restore these? So this one I bought in this condition, and I just literally got this. I spent quite a bit of effort combing the world. I'd seen pictures of it. Well, it was here, right. 10 miles from where we're standing. And really? I, I just got this car. Wow. And this one is going to have further restoration. This one I sent to a place in Ancona, and this has been completely rotisserie uh, restored. Poltrona Frau did the interior for me. You know, the handles are all handmade. I mean, they spent a lot of time on the details of this car. And, you know, everything was made up by hand because this, although it's a multiple platform, the car is wider, longer, and taller. Now, were all the pieces here and they were stored or did you have to make a lot of it? I had to make a few pieces, right. but mostly everything was there. And it was, in, it was in original condition when I got it, but it was beyond the pale. You know, it's interesting you said this is 10 miles from here because mm -hmm. I've always found whatever I was looking for, I always wound up finding within 50 miles of LA. <laughs> you know, I come here, like when I first came to town, in the 70s, I was looking for Bruff Superior motorcycles, and they were always in England or New right. Zealand or something. And then I'd talk to somebody, you know, Larry up the street, what? And there'd yeah. be like a guy. Like, <laughs> and you realize Los Angeles, especially in the 20s and 30s, Lockheed was here, right. all the engineering companies were here, yeah. you know, 
and all these guys like mechanical things Correct. and all that stuff is sort of around same thing with this obviously yeah. this is probably brought back by some engineer or something after the war huh? yeah i mean that happens a lot of time it's it's funny because i you know i have a lot of the history on this car and the documents go back and for, forward and you know the car sells for x amount and then the next guy sells it back for seven times the amount like there's a couple different cash registers going on right, in the, right. uh, well i think that's called money laundering i think that is yeah, yeah yeah i buy it from you and then i sell it to joe the gangster then joe he sells it to somebody else and then that's how you you get a profit we make a different bill of sale yeah yeah, yeah. Capito. Capito. a different bill of sale get active very <laughs> good so four speed transmission yeah so 600 cc that must be what 38 horsepower maybe uh, maybe and I think it's around 780 cc. I oh, mean, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's the 600, but it's around 700. So it, right. But you know what's what's wild? I have a lot of the Cinquecento jollies, and but as you know, I mean, you can drive them up a hill. I mean, you can drive. I can drive them through the forest. Up. I mean, they're so hardy. Right. You know. First, let's start with the color. Were these the original colors of both the vehicles? Uh, I have uh, only black and white pictures, so. I don't actually know. Oh, okay. This one was sort of a muddy gold, so I just thought this would be an excellent color choice. Well, it's an, it is an excellent color choice. I just wondered if you found a paint chip under the door or something. Oh, I had the original color. Oh, okay. It just wasn't, it was more, I probably gotcha. better on a hearse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I got you. I got you, okay. And were they leather when they were done or vinyl? Originally? No vinyl. Yeah, yeah. I had to kick it up a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, I agree. I, I agree. took liberty there. Did you have to remake this plastic piece? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, that can't be easy. The part where six people tell you they can do it, no problem? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, we went to helicopter companies. I had this one made in Italy. Right. This one was made locally. I was happy to hear he went through the same. He, had a, he went to a bunch of different places right. either. So yeah, it took uh, it took quite a bit of time. We had six different people take an attempt at it. And how many was it years to do this? Or was it fairly quick? This, yeah. I mean, I do some restoration. I'm sure like you in all different places. Right. You know, in Italy, I find like they work like they're being chased. Right. I mean, I got this car done in one year. Oh, that's great. And this was this was more complex. We had to make some parts, some pieces. But I have, uh, I find I have very good luck doing restoration. I mean, in Italy, it depends on what it is. If it's a Fiat, you know, they're so familiar with it. Right. Obviously, it's, um, I mean, anything engine, somebody can turn around in three weeks. Right, right, There's right. 50 guys to do it. But I like, you know, the restoration in America is probably overkill some of it. Right, they spend right. a lot of, but um, I think they do, they've done probably six cars for me at this point. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, they did a car for me once in three months. Are those the original hubcaps as well? Yeah. Did you, did you, have, no, to, did those, you have to make those, or were they available? Those, those came with the car. Oh, okay. So okay. I was very fortunate. Let's see how the, can we open the door? Sure. Here? Okay, so you got your sort of suicide door. Non-synchro gear. Not, not just non-synchro first, or the whole? First. Oh, non-synchro first, okay. But you, you're reminded when it yeah. makes a noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's in kilometers, obviously. It goes to 110 kilometers. That's about 60 miles an hour is your top speed. Yeah, right? if you pull it from another car. Right, right, right. Uh, I, I mean, it's just so odd looking. It's just so, it lo almost looks like something from the Jetsons, you know? Yeah. It, it looks futuristic, yet it's it's too high to be sort of jet age you know what i mean so it has there's so many conflicting things happening at the same time it, it makes it fascinating looking it's a really and you have these here to sort of these speed lines the i call flare. them yeah just to add a bit of yeah and obviously drum brakes all around yeah. the discs no, drum brakes and also i mean this is obviously i mean especially for an italian car yeah the roof is so tall on this yeah i mean it really is super unusual. I mean, a normal uh, multipla would be, I don't know, seven inches lower, right, eight right. inches lower. Um, also, you know, it kind of looks a little Russian as well. Yeah, it does, <laughs> yeah, it does. Mean, let's be honest. It does, it does look Russian. Well, it's kind of like a guy with a bad toupee, you know, 
Well, he, he's a nice looking guy, but there's just something weird about his head. You know? I know a guy like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's in the papers often. <laughs> yeah. And this, but this comes off, doesn't it? Yeah, this well, comes off. I see the latches, because my God, in, in the Italian sunlight, oh my God, this uh, thing must be just an oven. A greenhouse. Is, yeah, yeah. The top comes off very easily, which I'm happy to say. That yeah. was engineered yeah. pretty smartly. Okay. Well, let's come around to, and you, it holds at least, what, six people? Yeah, or yeah. more. Yeah. So, and and it's, if it's an Italian family and they really got to be at a football match, maybe 12. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. As long as you're not in any hurry to get there, I guess. No. Now, what is that? Is that an adjustable steering column as well? No, this has been on the car. It's actually a lock, but it's vintage and I have no idea. Oh, I see, it locks the steering. Yeah, so, uh, somebody must have put that on. That's probably something we're gonna have to get off. Oh, okay. It's Cause interesting it, Cause it looks like a modern, you know. Yeah, it flips up, catches the wheel, and there's a key to lock it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know who would have ever locked this car. Yeah. Let's come this was in service at the factory for over 10 years. Oh, it was? Yeah. Are these both the same design or is there a little different design? Yeah. It's just a color scheme that's throwing me off. The only thing, they're, they're the same. On one, two, three, there's, you know, there's the speed lines right. change a little bit on the car, but the actual car is the same. Now, this one has a reflector or a blinker, but this one does not. Any reason for that? Um, you know, they just decided to do what they wanted to do that day. Yeah, yeah. You know? Sometimes different countries have different, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, as I said, I just got this, and I'm just doing more research. There's not very much anything different on the cars, but I'm guessing that somebody added that on, or like in any factory, you know, people took whatever parts were off, right. you know. I noticed one has white walls, one has black walls, so this is more the sport model, I guess, yeah. with, the, with the black walls, with the black wall tires. Now this one has a grill, which made, might some people think the engine's in front, but the engine would have to be just a, an inch wide. Yeah. So, so I met this just allows air into the cabin, I Correct. guess. Correct. But the wood bumper is the, is the most clever part, because you think, just so easy to bend a piece of steel and chrome it and put it on. I mean, just the, all, the sense of design in there. And it's so funny, all the wood is on the outside. There's no- yeah, there's none on the inside. There's none on the inside. Yeah, I, I love the wood bumpers. I have these on, I mean, I have a collection of, I've been collecting a number of the rare one-off and but uh, this seems to be, you know, on the stuff that Agnelli seemed to designate, seemed to have that extra flair and that yeah. extra elegance and sort of more nautical. And what was his first name? Giannini? Is that his name? Uh, Gianni. 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 And he was the most powerful guy in yeah. Italy, wasn't he? I mean, he was... Agnelli was the other pope of Italy. Right, I right. Mean, I used to love Rodney Dangerfield, so I met the pope. He took a swing at me. <laughs> Now, but I always remember Gianelli being sort of like just the classic Italian playboy. He was always driving some exotic car, yeah. Ferrari or Fiat, somewhere in Monaco with, you know, the cigarette and the, the beautiful woman. And yes. it was just the whole, it just almost a, like something from Mad Men, the TV show. Just fascinating, fascinating. I mean, stuff. he was, you know, ahead of Gunther Sachs. And I mean, he, yeah. he was just the ultimate successful Playboy. Yeah that, yeah. that that I mean, people loved him. Yeah. The laborers loved him. I mean, he really I mean, he kept a lot of the commerce in Italy alive, I think. And Fiat then was sort of, for lack of a better term, the General Motors of Italy. Yeah, I, I mean, so. they controlled every yeah. aspect, trucks, train. I remember they had the factory with the test track on the roof. Yeah. It's... Can we come around? Can we see the engine? Can we come sure. around to the back? Let's take a look. Let's, uh, I'll let you open the trunk or the hood. Okay. That's a Fiat, all right. <laughs> That's the same as my, uh, my little Topolino, except an overhead valve. It's an easy engine to move in and out. And I love the fact that the generator is as big as the engine block, or yeah. the head almost. Uh, yeah. You don't really need a cherry picker to get the engine. No, out. no, and just all very compact, radiators back here. You would think there wouldn't be enough air. Where is it drawing the air from? Underneath, I guess. But you got a puller fan here. It's a puller it fan there. Right, right. So Not much is coming through here as of... Uh, no, no. And the engine's obviously all stock. It's a little dirty, though. Oh, there you go. And this is, fill your gas here? 
Yep. So you got to open the hood to to put gas in it. Yeah, I mean it's pretty economic. You know? Yeah, and, and very compact. It's really, really, just fascinating little car. <laughs> yeah, just amazing. I mean, they made millions of these motors. Yeah. I mean, they they just. Uh, it's like in a Royal Enfield in India, you know, they get a little chewing gum, a paper clip well, after yeah, it's broken yeah, down yeah. and they're back on the road right, in five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is sort of a Model T, isn't it, of, of, of Italy. Just so beautifully compact, very nice. Obviously, it's the same exact motor in that one. I hope. Oh. We dropped a 327 small block. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's just the high roof is what makes it so unusual. Uh, any other features here? What I mean, it's have? pretty great at night when there's light on inside. We, we were driving this down sunset, yeah. uh, I don't know, about a month ago. And it just looks like it's, I mean, <laughs> lit up. Yeah. It really looks like a, a spaceship. You don't want to get T-boned in this, though. No, no. No. No, no. Um, I mean, the special features are the ashtrays. Right, yeah. Uh, and look, there's an ashtray for everybody. You just, just people smoking exactly. constantly in this thing. Now the tail lights I, rec I recognize is just standard Fiat yeah. tail lights. So the trim pieces are all off the shelf. Yeah, and the handles are, uh, you know, all the handles and the pieces inside are all, you know, machined up. I guess on a lathe, and you know, there's not a much adornment to the back of the seats. But um, it's for, I mean, for a car of this age, an Italian, it's just massive inside, ironically. Right. It's a tiny car, but as you mentioned. Well, the thing I find interesting is that you always hear the jokes about the Italian electrics. Right. But not so much with Fiat. That's more the exotic and the high-end stuff. Fiat was a car that had to be dependable and had to run. The police used them, taxis yeah. used them. So I, I, I've had a number of them, well, not enough, but a few. And I really never had the standard quote joke electrical problems right. with Fiat. It's always maybe with a Ferrari or an Alfa Romeo or something like that. But Fiat, it's pretty, pretty. Yeah, the wiring harness, I, yeah. they, they work. I mean, we don't spend any time talking about the electrics in these cars. Yeah, yeah, very nice. And one thing they like to do is, you know, you'll find in the different Fiats is, you know, the, uh, the choke and the starter. Right. You know, they'll be switched around. Right. You know, occasionally different. They all come differently. Yeah. And, they, yeah, yeah. you know, one thing's for the turn signal, one thing's for the brights. Literally, right. the same knobs on the same car yeah, yeah. work seven different ways in seven different cars. Yeah, that's fun. But they don't, they don't, you know, we haven't had any fires or anything like that. Can we take it for a spin? Absolutely. Let's go for a ride. So I'm going to take both of them out? Yeah, let's, uh, let's have him bring the other one out as well. This is Greg. Greg, great. how are you? Okay, so we will have a caravan. Okay, just duck the head. Oh, you have to duck, duck your the head. head. Okay. Head oh yeah, I see what you mean. Head goes in first. Okay. And Smells the seat is not adjustable. No. Okay, let me let me get my leg on the other side of the steering column here. <laughs> oh god, there we are. Oh, once you're in, you're okay. Look at the headroom. God, Lincoln could drive this car. So I'm a Greg. Arrivederci, Greg. Ciao, bello. Ciao, bello. Ciao, dopo. Hola, Maurizio. I like a bigger pizza pie. It's lively. You just Miss Daisy went faster. Yeah. Be not so funny. I would always had a thing against cars that only went. 40 or 50 miles an hour, oh, that drives you crazy. But then you get in them and you realize that's exactly the car, and they're quite relaxing and fun yeah. to drive, you know? Yeah. Like, this is actually a lot of fun to drive. I mean, you've got this ridiculous roof and it's high ceiling and... Yeah, when I, 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 I used to have the same thing. And that's, but when you switch to the Jollies, yeah. you know, Jolly in Italian means Joker. Right, right. So they refer to all those cars as Jollies. They right. refer to, but at the end of the day, if you're driving just around Beverly Hills or Santa Monica, or at the beach or in Rhode Island, right, right. it's absolutely all yeah. you need. Yeah, exactly. And then you don't miss the speed, and they put a smile on your face. Yeah, there. exactly. I mean, it's kind of civilized, no? Oh, it's very civilized. It's a wonderful car. You know, I, I love the period when cars all had a national identity. The 
French cars seem very French. A British car seem very British. Now everything is so homogenized that it's, yeah, it's not the same anymore. I am absolutely not interested in really anything new right now. Yeah. I mean, like, there's nothing. And what I, you know, right now what I've sort of been interested in is the Bentley R's and T's and S's right. from the nine, the early right. 90s. Right, right. Um, you know, as a more, con that, that's getting into the contemporary. I mean, I have a two-door G-Wagon, a G500, one of the European ones. Right. You know, it's a 2001. Do I get a new one? It's the same body. It's the same. Right, right. I just, there's no point. And Green's keeping something for a while, right? I've had it for 15 years. Yeah. This thing actually dry. I mean, it drives very nice. And the nice thing is, in case of an accident, you're the first one on the scene because you're so close to the front. You know, most cars, you're all the way back. Whereas this, the, oh, the accident happened right there. You could drive with a doctor in the back seat. That's right. I'm literally probably nine inches from the front of the car. Hilarious. Now, what is your background? Oh. Is it in cars or what? You know, I, I've i always been into cars. I mean, right. people ask, I mean, people, I'm sure they always ask you, when did you get into cars? Right. I mean, as soon as I could make the sound, right. I had something in my hand. Right. You know, I must have rubbed a Hot Wheel car over one million miles of walls. Right, right. You know. Um, but actually, you were an adult when Hot Wheels came out. Hot Wheels well, Hot no. Wheels came out in 68. I was born in 66. Oh, OK. So. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah, OK. Well, I mean, if you really were lucky. I'm really old, so I just assume I, I, I have to go by there. You could, you know, get a relative or somebody to buy you a Corgi. With right, this, you know, right. top shelf. Right, you know. right. So I don't know. At two years old, three years, I could name every car on the road. And right. Just, but um, and I don't know. Probably from Racer X and Speed Racer. You know, the Porsche 917. I mean, I, you just, you know, you have. I have these visual images that never leave me my right. whole life. Yeah. You know, you see the trumpets on a carburetor. I mean. It either hits you in the gut or it yeah. never leaves or... It's funny how that works. Right? I mean, you never forget it, right? No, exactly, exactly. So I, I started buying and selling vintage furniture and decorative arts in the 20th century. Yeah. I had a scholarship to the art center. I never went. I just moved to New York at 19 with a couple hundred bucks in my pocket and uh, from L.A. Right. Um, but, you know, I always loved cars and bikes. I mean... I snuck in the field next door and rode, you know, the Honda 50 that my neighbors were driving. Right, right. I mean, wasn't allowed to be on motorcycles, but there was no thrashing that would equal the thrill of, oh, it wasn't I, worth doing that for. Exactly. I mean, I drove bicycles off into the river, off ramps, I mean, uh, but I just was always into cars and motorcycles. Right. And, I love motorcycles. I mean, the thing about cars is they're more three-dimensional, so there's a lot more body. But the great thing about bikes is you can put ten of them in the space of one car. That's why I got into bikes. I have a space in New York, in the city, that I have a tenant. I have a tenant there now, but I had six, you know, three MD Agustas, a couple of Ducatis. I had six bikes in one parking space. Right, exactly. And it would, and it would rotate them daily. Right, right. But I've always worked in design and design architecture and products. And, right, right. Um, I just love cars. I mean, yeah. I, mean yeah. I, I also love, like, you know, for me, like, I've spent a lot of time in Italy. And, I mean, you know, similarly out here, when you can take a protractor and make a 100-mile radius, and all these metallurgists, engineers, I mean, same in Milan. Yeah. A hundred mile out, mile radius, which you know would include Turin. There's just so many geniuses. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, amazing, isn't it? I mean, Italy has incredible design. But what the consumer doesn't think about is how the clutch is working, that the that, that the parts actually have to function. Right. Um, even if it's, you know, cashmere in northern Italy, they say Laura Piano makes the most beautiful cashmere. Those Italians make the machines. 
to make the most beautiful thread to make that final product. Right, it's the right. same in Italy. Or out here. There's just, you know, around here there's a lot of ex-aerospace engineers and a lot of thinkers. Well, you know, it's a funny. Singer is less than a mile and a half really? from my shop. But I, when I first heard about it, I thought, oh, they must be in the Austrian Alps or somewhere, you know. And then I see, I, I saw a couple of fortunes got different singers, and I realized, I ran into somebody, yeah, we're right around the, what? They came to my garage, and I go, they're right around the corner. Is this the fastest this thing has ever been, you think? Yes. Yeah. I think so. We're hitting 65 kilometers an hour. We oh! Oh! Hurry, I want to see the transmission assembly before we leave. Yeah. Hurry, Jim. Wow, look at that, 70. 70 kilometers. We're doing it. Huh, huh. But you know, I feel like I'm going 75 miles an hour. But it's, I mean, it's relaxing. Yeah. How's the, I mean, how's the seat? No, I mean, it's so very very comfortable, right? comfortable, yeah, very nice. It's, it's smooth, no? Yeah, very nice. Nothing's rattled, but I mean, that's not why we have the car following us. No, no, they do a beautiful job. Looks like Fiat's on parade. You know, I never thought going this slow could be this much fun, but I mean, it really is. It just makes you laugh. People wave. They walk up. They look at you like you're from another planet. It does look like a like a cartoon version of an alien spacecraft. You know, with the and I have the big head. You know, the alien with the big head comes down and he, you know, he pulls up next to the guy. Hey, what's that? You know. But Stuart, thank you, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, great car. Yeah, thank you for having me. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. See you guys next week.